Power of energy. Let's talk about this. Power of energy is not a new phenomenon. This has been practiced since before Christ. Yet for centuries, it's been dismissed and discounted. We are now seeing a resurgence of energy, particularly as people try to find alternative methods to address both their personal health and their personal wellness. It's making a comeback. In energy medicine, energy is both the client and the medicine. Now think about that. Your body has its own natural healing ability, which can be accessed through simple exercises as well as through hands-on work. How does this work? We're going to find out today. My name is Frank Sakari. This is Life Altering Events. My guest today is Stacy Newman. Let me tell you something about Stacy. She's an intuitive who practices and teaches energy medicine techniques. She assists her customers in transforming their lives. She does not diagnose or treat specific diseases or disorder. And energy medicine is complementary to Western medicine. It can greatly enhance your ability to heal and to thrive. We're going to learn more about this now. Stacy, welcome to Life Altering Events. Thank you, Frank. I'm really happy to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. We, you and I spoke a, a couple of weeks back. And I was just intrigued by your story and the things that you're doing. So, Stacy, you had you told me you had this very successful business, and then something happened, and it it, it sort of all went to pieces. What what happened? What was the business, and what happened? Okay. So, my mother and I created a chocolate shop um, quite a while ago, but in 2005, um, there was construction added to our building, and it resulted, things were, corners were cut, resulted in a flood. Oh. Um, that destroyed my kitchen, destroyed my health. So I was actually at a high point in my creativity and the business was thriving and all of a sudden I couldn't be there. So to prevent more moisture from coming in, they sealed the drywall with latex and I became anaphylactic to my shop. That, that walking in, I had about 10 minutes before I'd get itchy, dizzy, and feel like I was going to pass out. So um, I ended up going to an allergist and other doctors and really did not get very far other than, here's a happy pen, good luck with life. Mm -hmm. So um, I ended up finding an alternative osteopath who had an allergen elimination protocol that helped me tremendously. Mm -hmm. So um, she helped me get back on my feet because I was too sick for six months to even go to work anywhere. And the treatments helped me a lot. But after, and I went back to work and after about a year, it was time to find something else because I still, well, most of my allergies cleared because during that time when I was really sick, I was reactive to the world. And I still had the latex allergy, which also corresponds with tropical tree fruits like avocados, bananas, mangoes, all the good stuff. And <laughs> so she sent me to an energy medicine practitioner who's also a psychologist. And that changed my life. Tell us about that. Okay, so name was Doug Moore and fabulous, fabulous person. And he was on the staff um, for Donna Eden's um, program. So Donna Eden teaches energy medicine mm -hmm. internationally. And so I worked with Doug both on the energy exercises to really boost my immune system, to help my resiliency, and also on the emotions re related to the loss of my shop my inability to go back there because I was so allergic to the place, even after it was cleaned up. And um, so we dealt with a lot of grief and other things that were keeping me stuck and releasing those emotions around the allergies really helped me transform them. And after working with Doug for a while, I decided to go for training as a practitioner because he helped me so much. 
and it was the best thing I could have done. So I went to the first year here in Cleveland and the second year in Phoenix, met some amazing people, including a, um, what, someone else on Donna's staff named Ellen Meredith. And she taught some wonderful classes based on intuition and um, really expanding, like thinking out of, the, out of the box. Well, there's no box to even see in the room. <laughs> and one of her techniques totally cleared my allergies. I have no allergies. I'm no longer afraid of balloons. I can wear latex gloves. I can eat guacamole and nice. banana <laughs> and without reacting. So, so my life has totally transformed and I'm doing work that I love. Incredible. And one of the things that, that I'm hearing more and more, Stacy, and you, you mentioned this when you talk, is there's, there's an emotional devastation that occurs with an illness or a, a loss, like something like you experienced. But when you go to, to traditional medicine, it's mainly anatomy and physiology. It is. And when you show emotion around something, they tell you to go see a shrink or give you drugs. Because exactly. They think it's psychosomatic, whereas from energy medicine standpoint or a traditional Chinese medicine standpoint, the emotions and physical are so intertwined, you can't separate them. That's something that I, I, I'm hearing more and more MD doctors, medical doctors, talking about this. And they're saying the, the take the pill model and call me in the morning or let's see what impact happens as you take these drugs. I'm hearing more and more that um, they're saying it's not working. And it doesn't address, as you said before, the anatomy and physiology is, is dealing with the symptom, All right? So you deal with trying to get to the root. So tell us about that. So the way I like to describe what I do is, um, I don't play whack-a-mole with symptoms. The, the game whack-a-mole where yep, it's yep. popping up, those are the symptoms, but there's something underneath that box making them pop up. So I like to lift up the box and see what's underneath and press that. Because usually when you address a symptom and you feel like you're peeled, you're in remission, things are, life is good, all of a sudden things come back because you never addressed what was making things show up for you. And they do show up for you. It is not something that happens to you. Mm -hmm. And I believe that all symptoms are messengers. They're your body trying to tell you something to get you to pay attention and make a change. That's a very interesting point um, that it happens for you and not to you and that all symptoms are, are a messenger. Uh, I'm working with a, a, a group that's forming a, a wellness program. And one of the, one of the MD doctors has, was, was so frustrated, was throwing up his hands, I'm, I'm, I'm burned out, I'm gonna leave. And then as he started talking more with patients, he started to see, well, part of the reason for these chronic issues is unresolved or unaddressed trauma or stress or frustration. Are those the types of things that you do? You try to find to that, to the, get to that core? Absolutely. But I am coming at it from an energy standpoint. Um, I want to stress that I am not a mental health practitioner. Correct. So the work that I do can greatly impact and improve your mental health and spiritual health. So, cause everything is interrelated. Um, so I will not analyze what comes up. Sometimes I'll get messages or see images and I will convey that to the client. But, and frequently it's meaningful, um, but we're not going into analysis of anything because that's just going to waste our time. And I'm not trained for that. And I, it's not part of what I feel is the real healing process. Mm -hmm. So when, when I work with someone, I do a lot of traditional Chinese medicine. So using acupressure, I don't use needles. Um, and 
I can feel what's going on in my hands. And actually I've been working remotely this entire time during the pandemic. And it's as if um, the client and I are transported to a healing space that is elsewhere. And I feel everything and frequently the clients do too. So as I'm holding acupoints and working with um, areas that might be hanging on to that trauma, um, it's tangible. And there are ways to release it. Wow. So is this, is this a form of like tapping the acu? Uh... Um, tapping is based on acupoints. Mm -hmm. They're meridian endpoints. Um, so what you're doing there is you're releasing the, you're disconnecting the physical reaction from the emotional charge. And it's very powerful. And I love it. But that is not my main modality. That's not your main one. So tell us <laughs> so, how this works virtual, what you do. I can see it face to face. Yeah. How, does it, how is it working virtually? Um, so I like to keep it on speakerphone because the video distracts me. Mm -hmm. actually visualize the body better without looking at someone. Um, so I set out a crystal grid just to show me where the chakras are. So the seven energy centers, hands and feet, um, just to get an idea of where the body is. But then I feel exactly where, if I'm tuning into, say, points on the back that relate to the meridians. And that could be a whole other discussion. Right, right, right. <laughs> We find something that shows up on that lung point. So we're going to go and hold on to that and talk about, I'll, I'll talk to the client about what that means. And it's about the metal element. It's about grief and difficulty letting go. Um, and when it comes into balance, you get to, you see the cycle of life. It's related to the time of autumn. You can see the whole year that's been and the harvest that's happening and prepare for the next cycle that starts in winter. Um, and having a reverence and understanding nothing's lost, it's just changed through this cycle. So by talking about the emotional impact of lung meridian, it goes well beyond your ability to breathe and exhale. It's, it's really about being able to release and, oh. and physically and emotionally. Now you mentioned seven energy centers. Can you tell us about a couple? Okay, so those are the chakras. Mm -hmm. And they run basically from the tailbone up to the crown. And each of them represents emotionally a, a theme um, based on development, like the root chakra, the very lowest one is about grounding and tribe and family and safety. And um, whereas the crown is up at the top of your head and it's your connection to your higher self and to spirit. Um, and each of them, each of the chakras can impact the organs that are close to them. So say the heart chakra right here in the center of the sternum um, can impact your heart and your lungs. Your solar plexus can impact your stomach and liver um, just because of the location. And then there's themes that go with each of those as well. So chakra clearing is something that I do frequently because so many of our stories and reactivities are, are housed there. That's incredible. <laughs> I, I, I love this conversation. Uh, <laughs> Stacy. you what were... You work with a mutual friend of ours who was facing stage four cancer. And she told me one of the things you suggested to her was to name it. How yeah. does that help? So it helps. And I have to credit Ellen Meredith with this. She's this is part of her teaching and it's so powerful and fun too, um, because you're invited to have a discussion with your body and with that messenger, the thing that's holding up the flag saying, help, help. <laughs> so in our friend's case, um, I asked her to name the tumor that was on her breast and she immediately got a name and was able to have a little conversation and, and find out, Hey, what do you need from me? What do I need to change? 
And she finally got the message, which is so common in breast cancer, which is you have to open to receive. Frequently, um, women and occasionally men um, who have breast cancer, Breast cancer, the, the theme is about giving until there's nothing left mm -hmm. and not worthy enough to receive that love in, in return. The, something I read on your site, you said that um, the illness, or in this case with our friend, will tell you why it's there. Is that right? It frequently will. It may not come in words. It may be a knowing. It may be something that you start to see just keeps showing up um, in your life. Um, there's, there's so many ways to experience energy. So, so getting curious. And if you don't get the message right away, you can continue that conversation. Um, Frequently, the name that comes to your mind first, no matter how crazy, is the right one. Just use it. I had, some, I had something going on, and his name was Marvin. And we had a great conversation. <laughs> like, I never would have chosen that name. <laughs> but it had to do with Marvin the Martian, which was just another story. <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, but it's getting curious. And sometimes if you're not getting an answer in a way that you can perceive it, um, you can ask hey, I don't, I'm still not understanding you. Can you try telling me? Or you can even sit down and start writing. Just start scribbling what's without thinking. So like automatic writing and see what shows up. There's so many ways. Or you find yourself a practitioner who mm -hmm. help you tune in. Because it's still, sometimes you just need someone to show you the way. I don't heal anyone. I help people harness their healing abilities. Right. All capable of healing ourselves. One thing that I hear quite a bit is the, you have X amount of energy, correct? As an individual, right? And if that energy is consumed without negativity, there's no room for the positive and, and, uh, and, and the gratitude as you write. So tell us about the power of gratitude and, and finding joy and how that helps this energy healing process. So I'm going to start with joy because there's actually an energy system that um, Donna Eden calls the radiant circuits. In traditional Chinese medicine, they're called the extraordinary flows. Mm -hmm. And those are the energies of joy. And it's not fireworks. It's not a three ring circus. It is the joy that lights up your heart. It's seeing an incredible sunset. It's experiencing something just that deeply moves you. That's, that's joy, that's radiance. Um, so it isn't about ignoring your problems, but it's about finding that place within that's just lit up by being alive. And that is healing. These, these extraordinary flows go through the body, um, there's eight of them, and they all have different themes of what they do, but they can go anywhere in the body to heal you once they're activated. So it's, they're the energies of our personal evolution. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that is the entire point of doing energy medicine, is to evolve our bodies to thrive in this world that we physically did not evolve to be in. We haven't caught up to the energies of Wi-Fi or chemicals or food additives, but they're all around us. Right. And they trigger our stress response. So the more we can work with our energies and our radiance, um, the healthier and more resilient we become. Wow. And bringing gratitude to that, having gratitude for these symptoms that have shown up. And thank you for showing me this because it's going to help me grow. And I do want to put out there that sometimes clients come to me who are physically not able to heal. Um, but when we work together, there is healing on a spiritual level that brings them peace. So 
it's it's very important. I mean, I can't make, wave a magic wand and make all of the ills of the world and the ills of the body go away. Mm-hmm. We would we'd never learn from that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's really a matter of healing, being a broader perspective of bringing gratitude into your life. So thank you for for having this opportunity to learn and experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and also just to, to find that self-love and worthiness and find uh, peace. I love that statement that uh, everybody's going to die at some point. That's just the right. way it is, right? <laughs> and having that uh, the gratitude. And, and what I really love about your work is you talk about, uh, as you said, peace. Whatever the situation is, we can find joy. We can be grateful. And we can create a sense of peace and calm. Is that right? Absolutely. Now, our mutual friend here, one of the things she told me was she kept her circle of people when she found out about this devastating disease small on purpose because it was the ability and, and selected people very carefully who would not be, oh, poor you, and what can we, that they rejoiced with her on the journey. Is that something you encourage? Yes. I've actually, I, I've encountered a few clients who have been intentionally done that. And energetically, it's about, this is your time to receive. This is your time to, to heal and set up some boundaries and say, I need to show up for me. I can't show up for everyone else. And what happens so often when people come by and they mean well, um, there's this pull to make them feel better, to minimize what you're going through or to get up and do things to show that you can or to, um, to not make them feel bad. And so sometimes you need to set those firm boundaries and say, okay, right now my world is going to get a little smaller while I go inward. Mm -hmm. And meditated for four hours a day. She could not have done that, had her world been as expansive as it had been. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Let's touch on this meditation. When you and I spoke, one of the things I, I said to you was, me personally, I cannot sit in that position for that period of time. I just can't. My brain goes everywhere. And you said something amazing about <laughs> your, where you meditate and how you meditate is where you find peace. You can expand on that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So um, I can't sit there either, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I can do it for a little while, but eventually I just, I get restless. So I go out, uh, even this morning, I went out into my garden. I did a little energy work on myself, some simple exercises, put my feet on the ground and really felt calm and ready for this. <laughs> so, but if I can get out into the woods, if I can get on water, we're right by Lake Erie, which I love, um, that helps bring me peace. Mm-hmm. You can go to a place in your mind that brings you peace. Sometimes it'll be a past life memory. Sometimes it'll be a place you been to before that you just loved or it could be someplace you don't think you've ever been before it can be on another planet it does not matter Mm -hmm. Uh, as long as the feeling is that of you're still in your body and you're feeling calm and peaceful that's incredible as we were speaking ladies and gentlemen i mentioned that i live in san diego an area called san Diego hills and so every morning, well, most mornings, I will get up and walk these trails where you can actually see the ocean, Pacific Ocean. And I said, I have such a sense of calm. And you told me that's your safe place. Now, who would have thought of that? <laughs> yeah, and that's where when your mind it calms down, where you feel peaceful, that's the state of meditation you don't have to go deeper you can you can work on um on your meditative practice and but eventually you have to bring that to your life so if you can experience that hey i'm out 
on this trail and I feel really peaceful. Well, what if I'm in the grocery store? Can I still feel peaceful? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. How do you transfer that sense right. of calm and bring that positive energy with you to other places? Mm -hmm. And I find that it's easier when, when I can find my peaceful place, when I'm active, when I'm feeling something in my body, then I can be out in the world and still have access to that feeling. I don't have to go sit on a mat and calm myself down. I can just send my mind to, oh, I, I see the lake. I woke up looking at a heron this morning. I'm back in my happy place. So it, it's, it's an, it almost seems like you train your, yourself uh, a different mind, a state of mind that you can recall or go to when need be. Is that, yes. is that the ideal situation? I believe it is because we have to be active in the world and involved in our lives, but there's no reason to be hyper-reactive or mm -hmm. constantly stressed. And right now with the world is pretty toxic on so many levels. And there are so many emotions flying around that it's hard not to pick that up. So working on, <laughs> there's, there's another energy system that we could go into, um, which is your aura. And it's about setting boundaries and allowing healthy things in and keeping out what you really don't need. But just even setting that boundary saying, hey, I don't want those vibes. I, I am at peace. Nothing can come in. Um, helps you maintain that sense of peace. That's, in, that's incredible. Well, Stacy, we're just about out of time here. So there's so many myths, so <laughs> many myths about energy healing. What last thoughts do you want to leave with the viewers around the world? Okay. Um, so the main thing that I want people to know is that there is always hope. That as long as you're alive and you have a desire to heal, there is always hope and magic happens. Mm -hmm. I love that statement. I, I, I was a medic in the military uh, during the Vietnam era. And there were, I can't tell you how many times I, I dealt with MDs, obviously that they would say, um, Frank, sometimes there's things that medicine just cannot explain occur. And he says, you can call it miracle, you can call it whatever it is you want to call it. But the key, as our friend said, was if you want it, if you don't want it, if you don't want to get better, if you do, you won't, right? Very true. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're just about out of time. I want to thank Stacy again. I, I love this conversation. It is, it is so important, particularly in the state of the world that we're in today, that she shows people how to harness energy and make an impact in your life. So again, thank you so much, Stacy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what life throws at you, I say this every single week, no matter what life throws at you, and as you heard today, it's going to throw a lot at you. Please do three things. Look up, get up, never, ever give up. Better times and better people will come into your life, people like Stacey Newman. If you want to know more about her, you can go to her website or you contact me, and I will make sure she receives anything you send. You can watch this on Roku TV or on my YouTube channel, Frank Sakari. If you use the YouTube, please subscribe. Now, let me leave you with this as I do every week. None of us are in this alone. And the secret to walking on water is to know where the rocks are. And today, Stacy showed us where many of those rocks are. Join us again next week for another life-altering event. Stacy, one more time, thank you so much. Thank you, Frank. It was a lot of fun. Thank you.